Now, the Helen Suzman Foundation is challenging the Home Affairs decision to terminate the Zimbabwean exemption permit. The holders of this permit have until the 31st of December this year to obtain other forms of residency authorization or leave South Africa. There are around 180,000 Zimbabwean exemption permit holders in the country currently. Now, for more on this, we're joined by the Helen Suzman Foundation's director, Nicole Fritz. Nicole, good morning and thank you very much for your time. What exactly are the issues, if you can take us through them, that have prompted you to challenge uh, the decision by the minister to terminate the ZDP? Good, good morning. Good morning to the viewers. Um, so the, the issue is uh, these are individuals who have been in South Africa lawfully um, for over a decade. Um, and uh, the, the permits have been renewed every three to four years. Um, and as I said, um, in uh, amounting to, to a decade. The position of the HSF is not that the Zimbabwe exemption permits uh, should be renewed in perpetuity, but um, the decision when it came from the minister in November last year that these um, permits would be terminated um, was with very little notice and no consultation with those who would bear uh, the most prejudicial impact of that decision. Um, and there have been various organizations who've been engaging with the minister, attempting to persuade him to, um, to change his stance. Um, and that has not come uh, to any sort of fruitful um, conclusion. And so we are um, going to court uh, in order to, to say that the manner in which this decision was made without, uh, without consultation, with very little not notification, um, it provides no procedural fairness to, to these individuals. And in fact, they will be put to this terrible choice that either uh, they must remain in South Africa as undocumented workers with all the vulnerability that attaches to that status, because the mm -hmm. vast majority of them are not be eligible for any other permits, or they must return to a Zimbabwe that is essentially unchanged from the country that they have fled uh, more than a decade ago. Mm -hmm. But then if we look at these three permits, because it seems to me from what you're saying, it's that you're not necessarily opposed to the termination, but the manner in which it was done. You're saying that perhaps they needed a longer period to sort the admin out. Do you believe that perhaps two years would be suitable in this respect then? Well, I do think that that has to be informed by by consultations with the Zimbabwe exemption permit holders themselves, right? And and I think that that this is um, this is the the, the glaring um, uh, deficiency in this decision making process is that one hasn't even sort of. Uh, given them sufficient respect to consult with them and say, okay, well, what is going to be required? Given that you have built, you've built homes and 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 families, and in some cases, um, careers here. What is it going to take for us to terminate this in in a in a manner that is going to be, you know, least prejudicially impactful? on your lives. And I think it's those consultations um, which have to happen and will then lead to kind of a fair decision um, mm -hmm. and allow for kind of respect and, and, and that our courts uh, and our justice system is is inconsistent that that you know when we when we look to safeguard safeguard the rights of the weakest amongst us those who cannot use the ordinary democratic processes and of course these Zimbabwean exemption permit holders they cannot they cannot vote they cannot call a member of parliament I mean th they cannot use the, those democratic processes and so actually the only avenue then is, that is available to them is is the court system and it is only when we are protecting the weakest amongst us that we are then able to be secure knowing that all our rights are protected. Mm -hmm. But then what do you make of the other aspect of this? Because the minister was at pains to explain to citizens that they're not being prejudicial in this respect. But we have to rem remember that when we look at these permits, we've had three exemption permit regimes. We had the Dispensation of Zimbabweans project, which included, I must add, the amnesty for Zimbabweans who had in fact obtained fraudulent immigration documents. Then we moved to the Zimbabwean special dispensation permit and then the current one, the ZDP. These all had the sole intention of contributing to addressing the broader issues of security as a result of political and economic stability that existed in Zimbabwe during that period. But by its very definition, Nicole, it is an exemption. You exempt or you depart from the standard criteria of qualifying for a permit. So would you say, if the minister says at this point he does not believe that the conditions that existed then exist today, would you say that is not a fair argument coming from him? 
Look, I mean, those may well be the arguments that the that the minister the minister makes in court. But I think, I mean, you're right to to refer to to the policy decisions, and they were very careful, considered policy considerations that informed the introduction of these permits. And so, when it was introduced in around um, 2008 2009, it was a response to the thousands of Zimbabweans who were fleeing Zimbabwe in the wake of the post election violence there, um, and there was a fear that. The numbers would overwhelm our um, asylum systems. Uh, there was also a sense that it was it would be so costly, uh, prohibitive for us to undertake the policing and the deportations uh, that that would be required. Um, and it was also thought that it would be safer for South Africans to be able to sort of for South Africa to safely record and track those who were coming into Zimbabwe, I mean, coming into South Africa from Zimbabwe. And of course, they had to meet various requirements. They had to give police clearance, et cetera, et cetera. So they were required to scrupulously observe the law. Now, those policy, policy requirements were very clearly set out. And the fact is, the minister has has made a decision and made an announcement, but those policy documents, which underlined um, the, the, the original introduction of these permits and the renewal of those permits, have not been revoked. And, and in many cases, the, the, the circumstances which underline those policy considerations are unchanged. Um, and so it is in that light that, that the failure to kind of provide um, no, you know, any more notification than they did and not to consult with the exemption permit holders themselves, I think, is an unfair one and is the basis of our challenge. Mm -hmm. So do you think, though, if they go the route now, perhaps if you succeed in court, they go the route of consulting with the permit holders, do you think they would come to a different outcome? Because one would assume that in most instances, most of the permit holders would say, we prefer to stay. But you have a government here with a tough task of balancing their humanitarian efforts and obligations against the economic and political stability of its own citizens. We've seen how divisive this conversation has been. You know, it's really divided South Africans. There are those that are saying the pie is too small now, so we're not in a position with our own economic climate and an overburdened health system to not do away with the ZEP and allow for those who qualify to come in through the other permits. So... It seems like a difficult decision that government finds itself in. Look, it's no, there's no question. This is a, this is a difficult issue, and and sadly, it it is a divisive issue. I mean, we absolutely understand for the average, for for ordinary South Africans who face them, who find themselves at the sharp end of kind of unemployment and poverty, it must be very difficult and and stick in one's mouth to. To, to hear that one must be generous to, to, to those who come from, from another country. But as I said, the policy considerations that informed us introducing the exemption were not only about um, you know, the humanitarian considerations in respect of Zimbabweans. They were about our own considerations, that, that it was inevitable that large numbers of Zimbabweans were coming into South Africa. That that it would be safer for us to be able to reliably track and record those those uh, those numbers. That the numbers were such that they might overwhelm our um, asylum, our refugee reception um, systems. And by international law, those who have a well-founded fear of political persecution and other types of persecution may claim. Uh, asylum in the country to which they go. Um, so those those were the policy considerations that weren't only about humanitarian considerations for Zimbabweans, but were also about our national interests. And the mm. fact is, if we are going to depart from that, we have to have a kind of a clear policy departure and a setting out of why we're departing from that that uh, uh, from those policies and an explanation as to why we think these numbers now and we're talking about 180,000 Zimbabweans why those numbers are so prejudicial to to the situation that we face in South Africa because there's no question we do have a crisis of poverty and and, and unemployment but it's not as if the minister or the or government is showing us that the removal of those 180,000 Zimbabweans and making their lives more misery, miserable is going to be to the betterment of ordinary South Africans' lives. And of course, if they could show that to us um, in, in, a, in a considered, you know, policy statement, then then the, the calculations might be different. But nobody nobody is showing us and nobody is is coming to the table and saying that that in fact is the case here's the case making miserable these li these lives of these Zimbabweans is actually going to tangibly improve and better the lives of ordinary south africans that case is not being made
Mm -hmm. I suppose then that this legal challenge is important for that because if they do have the information, then they'll bring it to the fore and it will be ventilated in our public courts. Nicole, thank Absolutely. you very much as always for joining us today. That's Nicole Fritz from the Helen Susan Foundation.